uh, dear friends, colleague, neighbors, brothers and sisters, I greet you with the greeting that you like. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Whenever you are, wherever you are, actually in this sprawling world. Uh, today, inshallah, we'll be talking about my journey or my visits to seven countries in 18 days in two continents and what's next. Let me first uh, thank my colleague uh, Aya Buzainab as well as uh, Hajar Ali who helped me with the presentation. And while visiting these seven countries in these 18 days, I am putting my slideshow. If somebody has the Zoom link, please jo join the Zoom. Join the talk with the Zoom link, because today there's a lot of uh, images and a lot of slides. First of all, we are facing a big catastrophe in Europe, especially with the influx of refugees and the internally displaced people in Ukraine but they are nearly reaching 4 million people. We pray for a ceasefire and we pray for an end of the conflict. But let me thank some of our members, the members of Muslim Chats Forum and the partner of World Humanitarian Action Forum who managed to go there to Poland, to Romania and to Ukraine to help the people. Such organizations like Muslim Hands from Nottingham, Human Appeal from Manchester, Human Relief Foundation from Bradford, Action for Humanity from Manchester, as well as Al Khair Foundation from London. I will ask all of you to thank those five organizations who are there on the ground to help the people and raising the awareness of the plight of the innocent individual of. Ukraine. At the same time, we should not forget people from Uyghur in China, Kashmir in India and Kashmir, Palestine, uh, Yemen, Iraq, uh, Syria, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, as well as uh, Central Asian Republic, that we should stand up to support them as well as with the others in African sub-Sahara countries. Not only Ukraine, but we all we have to treat everybody the same. Coming back to our presentation today, if you follow me on the Zoom and the slides, we begin. 2022 is something, uh, I have a blessed start. Because end of January this year, I visited Kenya for nine days with 14 young people like all of you, male and female. And they learned a lot from the field office, from the rights holder, we stopped talking them and calling them beneficiaries. They are the rights holders. And from the young people who are very energetic and keep asking a lot of questions, a lot of questions. This was my first long journey uh, uh, today, and I mean, uh, uh, in this year. The second one is the one which uh, I we ended uh, this month, visiting uh, seven countries, 18 days, with uh, some friends and colleagues from Islamic Leaf Card. Let me. Uh, explain to you how did you spend our time because it's a, ma a matter of transparency. We spent 18 days, which are about 432 hours, 25,920 minutes, 1,555,200 seconds. It's a lifetime for somebody who could be living on earth or could be animal, could be bird, could be any creation of God. 
we divided our work between sleeping time, relaxing, and working, chatting, and uh, discussion time. The sleeping time was between five and six hours, five and six hours, five and six hours, which about 20, 25% of the day for the 18 days. The working would be 18 to 19 hours with 75 to 80% of the time. We made nine journeys by air. The rest were by car. London, Addis, Addis Ababa, and Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, Oroma, Oromia, Oromia, uh, Addis Ababa, Addis Ababa, Samra, and Afar region, Samra, uh, Addis Ababa, Addis Ababa, Istanbul, Istanbul, Pristina, and Kosovo. Then between the countries in the Balkan, which is Kosovo, Montenegro, Macedonia, Albania, and uh, Serbia. It was by car by car, not, no, no plane. Because it used to be the old Yugoslavia, one country. Then we came to Istanbul, Birmingham. So nine journeys by air. What were our objectives? Our objectives were, number one, to accompany the team from Canada, especially the young and new CEO, mid 30s, very young, to be, the CEO of an organization which is raising $70 million. 16 years old organization raising $70 million and the CEO is in the mid 30. I have to accompany him. Second objective was studying the chapter of the organization, whether Islamic Leaf Worldwide, Islamic Leaf Canada or others. The history I have lived through. Third objective was to visit the projects exposure to the project. You cannot be a CEO or a director or a manager unless you go to the field and be exposed to the field work. Number four, understanding the needs and suffering of the right holders, no beneficiary, no beneficiary, right holders, okay, who pay our salary. Number five, learn and again knowledge from whom? From the field officers. There's a lot of knowledge and the experience in the field. We have to learn from them. Number six is studying the realities of life and the challenges facing citizens, communities in these regions. We went to Ethiopia first, then the Balkan, then Turkey for different purposes. In Ethiopia, we have different meetings, like we met with the Canadian embassy, we visited the offices in, in Addis Ababa, we're meeting with community leaders, we're meeting with right holders, as I mentioned before, in Afar, Oromia, and Addis, we're meeting with the volunteers and field workers, we have two workshops organized, one in Oromia, and the other one was in uh, Afar. Based many income generation projects, such as an important woman, energy saving and the climate friendly stove making. Women making climate change, climate, uh, sorry, energy saving and the climate friendly stove. Women are making this to save energy and save money. Youth ICT center, and this youth ICT center, which we visited in Oromia and in in, not in Oromia, in, in Addis, you know how much it cost? $2,000. Like becoming IT center for internet, for telephone communication, for printing, for all these kind of services. Vesting textile centers, making beddings and support 80 women in Addis. Animal fattening projects and selling the animal after they fatten it before uh, uh, to the market them visiting our Afar region and to see actually the, the impact of the war, which was happening between the government, central government, as the, the, uh, the, the Tigran rebels in this area. This is the uh, program. And this is, we, I said, we organized two workshops because when we visited this area, we decided to be, to meet with local organizations. We organized one workshop 
in uh, in Aramia, the second workshop in Afar. And in these images, you can see it, we're meeting with about 15, 20 organizations, local organizations in uh, Aromia uh, region. And this is another project, which water project uh, and water piping, uh, uh, sending water to different household in this area, in Oromia, in a place called Shiro. Sh Shiro, Shiro, yeah. Shiro in Oromia. I'm meeting the right holders in this area with the team came with me or I came with them from Canada. Then we went to Afar. Afar, there was a conflict between the central government as well as the Tigranian. But more than 300,000 people entered the region of Afar and this, yani, disrupted the economy, the social fabric, and everything. And the Afar now, which is in Arabic called the Afar, actually is in a dire need for help because they are having 300,000 people on top of what they have, and this very uh, deprived area, very poor area, and this one of the hottest and lowest point on earth in Afar. It was it's, uh, the, the lowest uh, point there is 160 meter underneath sea level, underneath sea level. So what, uh, the lowest and the hottest on earth. This is some photograph from uh, the workshop in Afar, in Samra Afar. And we met a very unique uh, woman, British, Australian. Why I'm mentioning her, her name is Malika. She's not a Muslim, by the way. She loved the humanitarian work. She loved developmental work. She loved advocacy work. She decided to live in Ethiopia, to leave, to leave uh, Australia and to leave UK. She married to a Muslim man from Afar region. And she's living there for the last 33 years, helping, advocating, training, directing. This is the message for our brothers and sisters. We have a mission to accomplish and message to deliver. Look at Malika. Malika isn't a Muslim, but changed her house into an orphanage to receive little girls and boys and to look after them as well. Thank you, Malika. The British, Australian, British, uh, uh, Australian, yes, as well as becoming Ethiopian as well. So then we ended our uh, tour or our journey in, uh, in Ethiopia and we traveled to the Balkan. And in the Balkan, there was planned to visit five countries. And then during this plan, actually, we were meeting with government of authorities, making workshops, a meeting rights holders, visiting different projects as well in Albania, Kosovo, Macedonia, Montenegro, and Serbia. And you can see in these two photographs, uh, two rights holders in Kosovo, one of them having a greenhouse, actually, she used to be a widow, but now she has her own greenhouse. The second one who provided her with cow, who provided her with cows to uh, look after them, become her uh, life support machine. This is the program. We started with Macedonia and we met with the Minister of Health and the local organization, because sometimes in different countries, if you don't have an office, you have to identify a local organization. Actually, the local organization will help you uh, to uh, implement your projects. And when we met the Minister of Health in Macedonia, what he wants, he wants training for the doctors, he want any medicine coming from the West to them because they are in dire need for medicine, medical equipment, as well as training the doctors, nurses, and uh, sisters. This is our visit to Montenegro to uh, uh, in the Balkan. And this building, huge building, is actually supported and built by Sheikh Zayed uh, uh, Al-Nahyan uh, Foundation. 
in Emirates. Thank you, the Sheikh Zayed and his organization. And the second project, which you can see in the second is up from Kuwait, is supporting local farmers by giving many tractors to plow the land and to save the time and the effort of the local workers and farmers when they started to plow the land and uh, 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 plant the land. And you can see the man is very happy. And this mini tractor, you know how much it's costing? It's only 3,000 euro. 3,000 euro will make sustainable life a livelihood of the men and the family in this area for generations. And the man standing to me or standing to him is very happy. Thank you, Rahma organization from Kuwait. This is our visit to Albania, which you can see the staff in the image there. Majority of them are women. In this area, the field workers are not only men, they are not unisex. And the women empowerment in this area is quite strong and they are very capable and they are very capable and they are very committed and they can do the job. So we have to use our sisters and our daughters. This is the visit to one of the orphans sponsored by Islamic Leaf Canada. Actually, in the photograph, you can see little children who are our daughters. And this is not a Muslim family. This is a non-Muslim family in Tirana. So we do not differentiate sometimes between the Muslims, which we need to sponsor, and the non-Muslim if they need the help. And you can see all these photographs with the young girls. This is another project for a widow. A widow is standing with her daughter in the greenhouse. We provided her with the greenhouse and she's standing with her daughter. And, but she is a widow looking after how much her husband died, left his mother, which is a mother-in-law, left his crippled brother and three children. So this young woman, which you can see it in the greenhouse with us, or you can see it here with, this is the mother-in-law and her son behind me in, in this uh, red uh, uh, top. And the woman actually was here with us in the greenhouse. She was looking after her mother-in-law, after her brother-in-law, after the three children as a widow. Thank you. This is a mosque, which one of the oldest mosques in Albania, but was saved from the communist regime. Communist regime was actually uh, led by Muslims. Uh, unfortunately, used to do either to demolish the mosques, like the Bogradis mosque, or to change them to stable or warehouse and others. And this historic mosque, which looked like an Ottoman style, actually, because it was a lowland area, it was most of them covered by water. So the authority did not recognize it. That was saved, alhamdulillah, and still people praying in it up to today. It is in a place called, a city called Skodra. This is the lake between Macedonia and uh, Albania called Lake of Ohrid, more than 350 kilometers between the two countries. Beautiful area with the mountains and other for people who would like to go for holiday to Albania. Actually, they can go there as well. And uh, in, uh, in, in a place called Bogradis in, in, uh, in, in Albania. And we have a story to tell you in Bogradis. 1992, when I visited this area with two young people, we were touring the whole country from Vlora at the far south near Greece to Boshkobiev at far north. And every time we go to a, a, a town or to a city, we look for the mosque to pray and to start ask people to say, if there's a guest house or can we sleep in the mosque. And when, to came, when we came to Bogradis, which is where the lake is, we went to the mountain to find a very small, uh, very small little mosque, it's like Zawiya, yani prayer hall, pray, prayer place. And we, it was locked, it was closed. Then we came down and the, the guard of the, uh, this uh, prayer hall ran after us. He said, this is not the mosque. Let me come and show you where the mosque is. He took us to the mufti of the city and went to his house. He gave us a cup of tea, 1992. 
And the Mufti brought the for all the photographs of the mosque and Shurat Anwar Khoja, which is the late president of, of, of uh, uh, the late communist president uh, of Albania, demolished the mosque. And when he took us to visit the place and he changed it into a huge opera theater with lounges, with rooms, with entrances, uh, full concrete. As Allah SWT, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala planned for that, and actually we came with the request of the Mufti, and the Mufti was begging us to try to restore the mosque again. And 1998, alhamdulillah, we restored the mosque, and now it is the largest, the third largest mosque in the whole of Albania, in Bogradis. Uh, from uh, Albania to Pristina, the capital of Kosovo, and if you remember the war of Kosovo in 1999, and the influx of nearly 1 million people from Kosovo to Albania at that time. And these are the young daughters and sons receiving us in a very folkloric dress, national dress, national Albanian or Kosovo dress. And next to it is a day school, which is organized by Islamic Leaf. And the children are learning uh, uh, computer science uh, languages and uh, at the same time uh, uh, mathematics. In, the, in this photograph, the three young girls, two of them are interned from France. They wanted to get some training, humanitarian and social and developmental work, and they look around, they found the Islamic Leaf Kosovo, and they decide, and you can see the two girls in, in the photograph wearing the head scarf are come are the French ones and the one to the right in glasses actually she was an intern but now she qualified and became a, a, a young officer in Pristina office as well so this is how the young girl is being promoted and empowered and educated to become uh, field workers this is the office with the director which is uh, uh, sister Albrina standing up to explain to us the program there. And this is another state called Serbia, who had been staying at the border for more than three hours to get permission to get inside. It was extremely cold. But the security is a little bit cautious about because Serbia is Serbia, as you know, and to get Muslim to this area. But alhamdulillah, at the end of the day, we managed to enter with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we sat down with the local organization, which has become a new partner for Islamic Leaf in this area. And you see those young girls sitting uh, around us, all of them are actually uh, uh, Islamic Leaf from Albania, Islamic Leaf from uh, uh, Shkodra, as, uh, from uh, Kosovo as well. We ended the Balkan visit and I'm telling, giving you a message. Balkan is on a burning plat, uh, plate. Burning plate or hot plate, what do you call it? Since 1995 and 1999. And we hope that the war will never be broken again in this area, uh, as we have seen this ugly war in 1992 to 1995 in Bosnia. After that, we went to Istanbul, were hosted by the uh, Yemen International Agency for Development who organized a workshop about sustainable, uh, uh, sustainability of uh, income. And you can see that I'm with the, with the chairman, uh, Mr. Or the vice chairman, Mr. Abdelakhib Abad, and the hall was filled with head of a local organization from Syrian background, from a Palestinian background, from Egyptian background, uh, from Iraqi background, from Yemeni background. It's full, full alhamdulillah, with decision makers. And the good thing about it, among them was about seven or eight young women attending this uh, uh, high-level workshop. As you can see, I was with uh, Mr. Tariq Abdul Alim, which is the, the uh, sitting next to me, uh, and 
طارق عبد العليم and Dr. Said Zinari as well you cannot see him in the uh, oh, images it was very high very motivating discussion very motivating discussion there was another meeting as well in Istanbul which is the International General Assembly of Islamic Republic Worldwide where I attended there so this was my 18 days and the last but not least meeting the president of uh, the Red Crescent uh, of, of Turkey. The Red Crescent of Turkey is the oldest and the first Red Crescent in the whole Muslim world, nearly more than 150 years old, which Dr. Kenick, Mr. Karim Kenick, and next to the image next to it was with uh, my colleagues from Islamic Leaf in uh, Al Fatih Mosque in Istanbul, and the last one in Hagia Sophia Mosque in Istanbul as well. This ending my 18 days in this area let us talk my what's my message to you young people my message to you young people you have to bear to be patient with me those who look at the enormous challenges facing the world today will not be able to realize the seriousness of what is being done and what's being allowed by the international community and this international institution with the blessing of the superpowers and the global multinational companies. This is a statement from me, very strange. It really makes Al Halim, the patient individual bewildered and puts the boy, the young boy or girl between the elderly and the baby fall out from his mother's womb, screaming and ranting and seeing people drunk and not drunk, but all seem lost, thirsty, lazy, and sick. This is the condition that we are facing at the moment. In the past, we used to see refugees and conflict in the South and the East amongst the non-Caucasian, the non-white. But now, unfortunately, with what's happening in Ukraine, we can see this influx of refugees moving outside the country or the internal displacement inside Ukraine is not black people, is not brown people, are not yellow people. They are not coming from this so-called underdeveloped or backward countries, but it's between the Europeans, in between the people of the same uh, race, same faith, and even same denomination, unfortunately. And we pray, I'm still saying, we keep, should keep praying for the ceasefire and the end of this conflict and letting everybody go back to his or her own uh, house. Many officials in this continent started, this is which, which actually double standard, started calling for maintaining democracy. We want to maintain democracy in Ukraine. How? By inviting foreign volunteers to go to Ukraine there to do non-humanitarian work. For me, I have seen what happened. I heard what happened during the Afghan-Soviet Union conflict in the 70s. The same call being declared by politicians, even some of the airlines was giving 50% for those young volunteers to go to Afghanistan, but when the, the war ended and everybody was coming back, those people considered by the same politician as terrorists. Please, please, please don't trust someone telling you go to Ukraine to do non-humanitarian work. Never. Those people when they came from Afghanistan, at the end of 80s and beginning of 90s, they put in jail, tortured, and some of them were killed. Don't, don't go there. If you want to go, to, to go there, 
to Ukraine, do humanitarian work only. Do advocacy work only, nothing else. Don't trust politicians. The leaders of our planet have removed and put to the side their moral values, their community culture, human civilizations, religious references, and the future vision of peace and the freedom for humanity. In contrast, they wore a costume of an unknown maker. Nobody knows what they were wearing. We neither can distinguish his color nor how to weave it or who is it is designer. This is what we see nowadays and this is what we experience nowadays. This is how we became young people. We live today within this strange and the bizarre system where we no longer understand this wording. I'll just read, read to you what I don't understand. Number one, what do you mean by freedom, struggle, equality, fraternity, dignity, humanity, social justice, justice, democracy, jihad, martyrdom, rights, advocacy, sacrifices, altruism, have no meaning, khalas. All these have no meaning, gone, gone, gone. All these and the other words often sung by poets, cited by leaders, and cried on their letters by the hypocrites from the media and scholars. Keep talking about them, but we never implement them. Don't listen to the politicians who tell you go to this area and do non-humanitarian work to help the Ukrainian. What should we do inside this burning stove, which is melting all values and morals? We are facing five challenges. We are facing five challenges. Challenge number one, the crisis in Ukraine. Show double standard. We treat Ukraine differently to the way we treat Somalia, Yemen, Syria, Iraq, Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, and others. Afghanistan, Eritrea, others. Okay? The issue of poverty that we have been exposed to in Ethiopia and the influx, huge influx of internal displacement inside Afar from Tigray to disturb the economy and the social life of the people in this area. The third issue is the Balkan, which is living on a hot plate or a burning plate or a boiling plate. I hope peace and safety for the people of the Balkan. I mentioned five countries, but also after the division of Yugoslavia, we add to the five countries that have been mentioned before, we add uh, Croatia, we add uh, Slovenia as well, and we add uh, Bosnia, so eight countries. Yugoslavia divided into eight countries. Ah, seven countries, seven countries, because Albania is not a part of actually of Yugoslavia. It was not about Yugoslavia. The need for training, training, rehabilitation, transfer of experience and knowledge, all these challenges we discovered is there in the Balkan or in Ethiopia or with the workshop in uh, uh, Istanbul by the Yemeni organization. Building the future generation and uh, they expressed uh, my interest in them was my companionship to the young CEO of Canada, whom I was with him for two weeks, and he was sharing my bedrooms we have uh, in the in the same in the hotel for the for, for two weeks. Dear young people, this message is for you. How will you deal with these complicated community issues and with others? which will appear suddenly to you, other issues, of which you have not came across before. How to deal with that? You don't have the experience 
to understand their inner and outer changing dim dimension. And it would be facing, like actually today, all of a sudden, there's a war in Ukraine. How to deal with it? Money laundering, Islamophobia, counter extremism, uh, counter radicalism, uh, terrorism, displacement. Even some of those young women have been uh, taken by some individual or filthy individual and trying to use them for uh, prostitution. Ah, I, I cannot imagine that. To use and abuse those vulnerable young girls and women. How we have to, how to deal with this? Let us think together of how to reach the community solution. Its roots are local, the roots of the solution is local, while its dimension are international. How? We have to address 10 issues. We have to address 10 issues. We have to address 10 issues. Issue number one is belief. Iman, in what? We have to believe in our faith, our homelands, our language, our history, our values, our culture, our ethics, and our intellectual philosophies, our future strategic vision, and valuable intellectual cultural identity that defines the pillars, contours of your personality. You have to believe in all this. This number one issue to believe in, believing, believing, believing. Number two, the issue of experience and gaining skill. From generations and figurehead, we have to learn from the people who have the experience and done well, and credible as well. The issue of knowledge and learning. And the meaning of ikra, read. Read is not read and write. Read means, for me, actually continuous seeking of knowledge and different experience. Continuous. Because Allah, of course, knows that Prophet Muhammad does not know how to read and write. But the first word of Quran was read, seek knowledge, seek experience. And the Prophet was the best example for that. This is issue number three, knowledge. The issue of community empowerment has been seen in Ethiopia and in the Balkan. For all individuals and different communities which we work with, women, young people, and members of other minority ethnic groups or ethnic minority groups. Empowerment here, brothers and sisters, colleagues, does not mean producing a carbon copies of yourself. Not Hanil Banna 2, not Hanil Banna 3, not Hanil Banna 4, no. But producing community leaders with local, having local characters, national identities, and valuable historical cultures within their legitimate frameworks. Empowerment is not an imported good. It's not an import of foreign product, but it should be manufactured product by the, the, the hands of the local nationals. Empowerment should be local. Empowerment should be local for men and women, young people as well. Issue number six, the issue of understanding the meaning of humanity, al insaniya the issue of understanding of the meaning of humanity. Humanity is all inclusive. Includes every living in your area, whether they are uh, uh, animate or inanimate. Could be climate, could be seas, could be human beings, could be animals, could be birds, could be skies, could be stars, could be land, could be moon, could be suns, could be angels, could be genie. All these are a part of our humanity. You have to be connected with the creation that Allah make them 
to serve humanity and to serve mankind. The issue of understanding the meaning of humanity. Number six, the issue of the industry of understanding. Understanding is an industrial process. Understanding is an industrial process. The issue of understanding, the industry, the, the, the industry of understanding, it is the manufacturing of philosophies. We need to produce philosophies. We need to manufacture philosophies. We need to formulate cultures. We need to write history. We need to highlight values. We need to raise awareness. We need to spread messages. We need to frame the laws. We need to identify the future visions for universe. This is the issue of industry, of the industry of understanding. I say it again, it is the manufacturing of philosophies, the formulation of cultures, the writing of histories, of history, the highlighting of values, raising awareness, spreading messages, framing laws, identifying the future vision for what? For the universe. Future citizens and extrapolating the astronomical changes of all universes, the astronomical changes of all universes. Issue number seven is a trust. You have to believe and trust that you can become a global leader. You can create generation to come. You can create generation to be leaders behind you, before you and after you. Succession of generation. Trust is only built on four, four principles. Faith, science, knowledge, and the experience. Faith, science, scientific knowledge. Uh, 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 faith, science, knowledge, and the experience. Issue number eight is community building. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot fragment community, we cannot fragment society, we cannot divide and destroy countries. No. The issue of community building, community building, is inevitable and solid base on what? Is yarning and weaving. How can we do the yarning and weaving of the social infrastructure of our society? Very difficult very difficult when you look at our mothers in the good old days used to get the wool from the sheep to yarn it then weave it huh? then make the dress or make the carpet or make the rug yarning and weaving of the social infrastructure of the society by whom by civil society organizations and by the hands of the local community, not imported products. If you look at the 2016 uh, World Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul, was talk about localization. Localization, localization, local, this yarning and weaving by the local communities through the empowered local civil society organization. Issue number nine. You have to tackle all these issues to stand against all the problems or all the challenges you'll be facing. The issue of communication, networking, building partnership. It is a central issue for sustainability of the institutional development process of community organization. Cannot live in isolation anymore, Halas. Cannot, finish. This is gone after Second World War, Halas, finish. Now things happen in Ukraine today, we know it today. We know it even before it happens. And we know what is the consequences and the analysis. So communication, networking, and partnership building. This is the issue number 10, number nine, brothers and sisters. Issue number 10, 
It is the issue which is very difficult because we don't believe in it, unfortunately, as Arabs and Muslims. It is the issue of research studies. Research, 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 research. Training and rehabilitation, communication and integration, filling the community gaps with community products. Filling the community gaps with community products. Applying the succession planning. You are not becoming a president forever. Chief, chief executive officer forever. Manager forever. Director forever. Minister forever. No, no, no. Succession planning. For leadership, following the charismatic leaders. And not, this is very important. I want you to listen to me carefully. Not stopping at the ceiling of community realization. The, the community realization could be, the ceiling could be 60% or 70%, but you have to rise above the community realization to lead the community, to save the community, to guide the community, to direct the community, and to empower the community. Should not stop at the ceiling of community realization, but moving beyond it to draw what? To draw the concept of future standard policies. The, to draw the concept of future standard policies. To draw the concept of future standard policy for your community or for humanity. The greatest two things things about societies are two, a mobile movement and systematic structure building. Two things, systematic structure building on one hand and continuous mobile moving of the society. What do you mean by the systematic structure building? The systematic structure building will be following a structured system, a structured system. Never in the past, is not in the present, and will not in the future stop. This system never, will not, never is not and will not stop. You know why? Because, Because it has these characteristics, four characteristics. I say it again. This structured system never and is not and do not stop. Why? Because it's characterized by four things. It is a spontaneous, a stable, self-sustainable. A spontaneous, a stable, self-sustainable. Okay. And this is the structure. As for the mobile movement of societies, it is going on by the second, or by the phantom of the second. It's on the move, moving, changing, developing, and growing spontaneously. So the, the societies are moving changing, developing, and growing, and the system is spontaneous, stable, sustainable, self-sustainable. Spontaneous, stable, self-sustainable. This structured system is fixed and unchanging and unchangeable. You know why? Because it's heavenly. Allah has created the system which allows the, the, the creation of him to go through it, movement, changing, developing, and growing the societies. So the system is heavenly and guiding the movement of humanity inside the system. The structure system is a fixed and unchanging heavenly one, and the movement is always permanent 
according to the heavenly law. The heavenly law, whether the atheists does not like it or like it, it's up to them. This is my belief. Okay. If we leave it, and if we don't follow the system and don't to join the movement, then we have missed the passenger seat as if we are on a train or on a plane or on a car or on a bus or on a coach. If we leave it, then we have missed the passenger seat which is next to other nations who are joining the movement, joining the process of changing, joining the process of development, joining the process of growing. Okay? And those other nations will bypass us and will become among, and we, if we don't join, will become amongst the backward nations. Young people, my last message to you, we must recognize the enormous role we have to do. Something wrong with the internet today. Every time there's a problem. Uh, young people, we must recognize the enormous role we have to do and the major responsibility placed on our shoulder and on your shoulder especially with all these daunting challenges facing humanity, of which it is journey were corrupted by whom? By human being. The journey of humanity on earth is corrupted by human being. That's why Allah kept sending messengers and the prophets one after another. And sometimes for the same village, like in the village in Surah Yasin, sent three, three messengers. Daunting challenges face humanity, of which it is genuinely corrupted by humans, who are always making themselves legislator, al-musharri', judge, al-adi, lawyer, al-muhami, juries, al-muhallifin, and witness al-humma, al-shuhud, and the criminals of Mugrimin. If a human in this system is, you are the legislator, the judge, the lawyer, the juries, the witness, and the criminals. But if we, young people, follow the theory of Christianism, which I wrote it 16 years ago, 2006, where we will not allow mankind to destroy it and will not allow human beings to destroy it. How? Because we will make the legislator to be the creator, Allah, not the human being. Al Musharra Sayakun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll make the legislator will be the creator and not the human. While human become judge, juries, witness, and the criminal. And this legislation will be according, in accordance with the law of the legislator, Allah, and not according to the whim of the witness, the lawyer, and the criminal. There's a difference between Christianism, al khalaiqiyya and al insaniyya that is the bottom line. If we want to reform a reformation, we must follow the process of restoration. If we want to reformation, we must follow the process of reformation. And this is the bottom line. Thank you, my colleague, my friends, my neighbors, my brothers, my sisters, wherever you are, whenever you are, for being patient with us and listen to this last 54 minutes. I hope that you understood the idea. 
There's 10 issues we have to address to face all these challenges. And enough is enough for the double standard of treating humanity differently because of the color of the race, of the language, of the religion. We are all equal. And my last appeal is don't be deceived by politicians who tell you go to Ukraine to do non-humanitarian work. We learn it from what happened during Afghanistan war. Everybody came back from Afghanistan was called terrorist. 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 Don't do it. Help our Ukrainian brothers and sisters as much as you help. Every individual needs help on humanitarian ground, nothing else. Politician might drown you. And when you are drowning, they will never stretch their hands to save you. We learned this from the war, the Soviet-Afghan war in the late 70s. And what happened to those people who came back to their homeland and were still alive to talk about the history. Thank you very much. God bless you. Good evening. Good morning in Australia, because Australia now is, is a time of Fajr. And good afternoon, maybe Canada and America. And good evening, Middle East, Africa, and Asia. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.